Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Jetworks. When I got into building path jets, I generally uh, followed Steve Shoemake plans, which I absolutely adore. I think they're fantastic planes. But invariably, at some point or other, I would end up doing a bodged landing or something where the plane would get damaged. I got quite tired of rebuilding noses all the time because of all the Decron and all the gluing and it was quite time consuming. So when I started building my own, I came up with an idea. As I was designing the airplanes in a 3D CAD system, I could quite easily design parts of it specifically for 3D printing as my friend Fernando had a 3D printer. Then of course if we crash then we simply hit the print button and to get a new nose cone. On top of that it helps to retain the sharp features of a jet instead of a blunt pencil. So I gave it a go and it saved a lot of time and uh, looked pretty cool. Because the 3D printed part has got the right sectional shape, it also helps you to shape the body to make your aeroplane look more realistic. I thought it was a great idea. From that moment on, all my nose cones were 3D printed. I soon realised that I could build lots of parts for the planes, nose cones and all sorts of unusually shaped objects, protectors for the underbellies and um, tail cones and uh, avionics pods and all sorts. So I eventually took the plunge and one Christmas I got a, a probably the cheapest 3D printer I could find but it had good reviews and um, I bought the Anet A8. So my friend Fernando tells me to go on to Thingiverse and uh, look at all the modifications that you can actually print out on your printer to improve the quality and there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of things you can print out and make your cheap printer into something quite quite sophisticated. It enabled me to get a, a decent printer for a very low cost. The most common plastic that people use is PLA. It's the cheapest and easiest filament to work with. But print PLA in a, a thin wing section and leave it in a hot van and you get this result. ABS is harder to print but it is much more temperature resistant. After much trial and error, I've successfully learned how to make vacuum forming canopy mold tools using ABS and then filling in the cavities with plaster of Paris. 3D printing doesn't take all of the work away, but it, it does help a lot. Here you can see uh, the different stages of my canopy tool as I'm rubbing it down and getting rid of the gradients um, and adding spray filler um, and layers of it and then flattening it and adding more and flattening it until I get a surface that is suitable for back forming from. Having got my tool as polished as I can, the results are quite satisfactory. Here's the end result. Once you have a 3D part, you need to bring it into a program called a slicer and there are a variety of uh, programs out there. I use Cura because it was free and I'm now going to load a model file. Uh, let's see what there is. So here we have a, a 3D print part. So the first thing you'll see is the there's a blue box. Well, the blue box represents the print area and the checkered bit at the bottom is the, the print bed. And um, so that gives you your your size restrictions and it's telling me that to print this out at the current settings will take about four hours 42 minutes and the settings uh, for your printer are all here if you look here it shows you um, so it gives you suggestions in the yellow boxes and it tells you what they are and what the typical settings are and um, these are the sort of settings I typically use I do most of my printing in PLA because I haven't had much experience of melting PLA although I did uh, leave my Typhoon in the car in the summer 
and the canards wilted, which wasn't much fun. Um, but um, so this is the print quality. Obviously, the lowest layer height, the the more refined the print is, but it takes a lot longer. Um, so it's finding a happy medium. So if you have coarse settings, so that they're very high layers then uh, it will be shorter prints but it will feel a lot rougher and the thickness of the shell because this part on the screen in theory is solid and what you have to define is the thickness of the shell um, now my, my nozzle on my printer is 0.4 millimeters so if I say the shell thickness of 0.4 it will print it at one layer one thickness then you have the infill which is a percentage so you can set your percentage and this is the crisscrossing lines within the uh, within the within the part that sort of give it the support and substance as it's been pr produced and I find 5% is normally about right for an airplane because you need to keep it as light as possible so I tend to print on most of my parts that aren't going to get any impact at uh, 0.4 uh, shell thickness and a fill density of 5%. Structural parts need to be much stronger. So I print these at 100% infill, so they're completely solid. Print speed, uh, the faster you print, um, you may have problems with the plastic sticking to the layer below it as it goes around and prints. So uh, I found 30 is about all right for me. Printing temperature, 205, and I the bed temperature you don't actually need for PLA you don't need a, a, a heated bed but for ABS you need to get up to sort of 9500 110 degrees uh, which for this cheap printer it struggles with uh, if you do get yourself a cheap printer like this um, I just recommend you get uh, what they call a MOSFET um, and it's, it basically directs all the heat away from the motherboard um, so that you can heat the bed without it doing any potential damage to the motherboard of your machine. Um, anyway, I'd, I'd Google that if, that if that's of any interest if you're doing an ABS. Um, support types, um, uh, sorry, platform adhesion types, there's a, these things called brims and rafts. Uh, there are ways in which you can help stick your, if you've got a thin object, that, you know, this, this has, uh, if, if I go back and show you here, it's, uh, the, 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 it has this face here, which is what it sticks to the bed uh, while it's printing. If you're worried about it not sticking, you can add a brim, which, in, in like like a hat, it has it creates uh, like a, a surface around the bottom to help it have greater stiction. And um, these are my typical advanced settings. Um, I won't go into the details of all of these, but because um, it will bore you to tears. But um, once you get into 3D printing, you can play with these settings to find which suits your sort of personal style. Whether you like things to be absolutely pristine and you don't mind waiting long, long times for your prints, or whether you want quick, rough and ready, whether you want light, feather light, or whether you want very durable, these are all achievable on these two menus. And then uh, there are a variety of other tools as well down here uh, where you can make mirrored copies. So if you're printing, say, something from one side of the plane you want to copy to the other side, you can do that. Uh, you can rotate the part within the, print, the, within the, within the program, uh, but of course that won't print uh, because it's not got anything to stick to the bed. So that will just fail um, and you can scale them up. And there's a whole variety of different tools that it gives you. And when you go to the, the print setting, then you've got control here of your, um, your machine. You press the buttons here, um, and what will happen, you can control the X, Y, and Z movement of your extruder. You can set the temperature here, filament um, and bed temperature, which is very useful for heating up your nozzle when you're inserting new filaments and uh, just testing it and running it through the print head. So it's pretty straightforward and uh, there are lots and lots of YouTube videos out there which will help you with all of those topics. This is just an introduction really. 
3D printers are very cheap nowadays, uh, certainly for the entry level ones, and they can be uh, very useful in uh, error modeling. And you can, they even pick them up from supermarkets because they're, they're here to stay and uh, they're a real uh, benefit to error modeling. And I hope this introductory video has been some help to you.